We're at Lenovo Tech World 23 in Austin, Texas. I'm with my friend Patrick Moakley, and we're taking a look at these Neptune liquid-cooled servers. We've looked at these before, but Lenovo, you guys have been at this for a long time. Yep. In my recollection, at least five or six years with this Neptune program, well early money on liquid cooling, right? right. So actually it's been five or six years with the Neptune branding. Oh, okay, so even right? longer than that. But 10 years on the, on the product technology. So we've seen this wall before, but now it's been updated with Gen 4 Epic, Gen 4 Xeon, you've got yep. H100s we're gonna take a look at. Yep. As we're taking a look at these, these are 1U blades, I guess, or, or chassis. What do you refer to these guys as? Uh, we refer to them as uh, two separate two socket nodes. We refer to this as the tray. Okay that holds two different nodes. And six of these go into a, a chassis then into at that point? Into a 6U chassis. Okay. And you can fit six of those chassis into a standard 42U rack. So if we did only compute nodes, do the math for me. Two times six 72. times six. Okay, thank you. So these are fully liquid cooled. We've got no fans in here of any kind. So we're right. gonna have a major power savings on the eight to 10 to 12% fan usage on these servers. Actually it's closer to 30. Right? Really, it's that so high on the 1U? 30% 30, 30 of your of any data center's electrical power is used for fans. Okay. Okay, and that's that's money that's spent moving air from you know the front of the rack to the back of the rack. Uh, basically, what two feet, three feet? Right. right. So it's not calculating data, it's not storing data, it's not moving data. It's just moving air from three feet. All right. So let's talk about these specifically, then, and run down the line. So this one, you said two different uh, uh, systems here, basically. Right. This is a two socket Intel. Sapphire Rapids node, their, their latest generation. This or, is the SD sorry, Intel scalable, V3, right? Yep. Uh, okay. Um, and and this is the same thing. Uh, they share the trade. This is kind of our flagship. Most of our customers around the world are running their supercomputing environments on on this platform. And let's be clear about this. This is a, a liquid loop that's cooling the DRAM, the CPUs, and yep. then you've even got plates down here for NIC yep. and storage, right? Yep. It, uh, the PCI, the storage, also cools. Uh, the voltage regulation, and okay. we have liquid cool power supplies as well, so you can have a completely fanless operation. On the power supplies, yeah, okay. So walk us through the progression of the liquid through this system, would you? So the liquid here, and we have a great animation I can share with you, but the liquid uh, enters through here, and it circulates, it gets split between the two nodes right. at the distribution point. Right. I found out today these are actually Gates hoses that okay. are used in muscle cars and in F1. Okay. So uh, the, these are automotive level hoses All right, uh, that distribute. Um, they distribute the, the liquid across both nodes and then it circulates over the cold plates, over both processors, through the memory, again, voltage regulation, PCI and storage, and then it exits out this, this way back into the CDU, or we have customers that actually use their captured warm water for things like building heat. To go do something productive, which is even better. Yep. So these are dripless connectors that chunk into your manifolds in, in, yep. uh, in the rack. I've seen these before, and these are pretty cool because from a serviceability standpoint, I'm sure there's not a ton of serviceability with the, or service required with these, right? right. But these just slide out. You can drop right. them on a tray and then have full access. There are clips down in yep. the front that yep. you Un unhook, you slide the node out. These are dripless, so there's yep. no water that spills. When you affect whatever repair or upgrade you have to do, you slide it back in, the water and the electrical both connect, it's ready to go. You don't have to wrench anything, you don't have to connect any cables, it's just slide it in, lock it in place, and it's ready to go. All right, slide down the family here. We've got the SD650i yep. V3. Again, another Intel platform, but this time with GPUs here. So what's Correct. the difference? Four Intel Pontevecchio or GPU Max series um, GPUs here. Again, it's the same two socket node, it's just powering the GPUs. Right. Right, so for um, uh, artificial intelligence, for like uh, mod, uh, LLMs, yep. Uh, yep. deep learning, things like that, it's all done via this. Now there's obviously a little extra power cabling here and some mm -hmm. other differences for this board, so right. some, some modest changes, right. obviously from the CPU board here. Right, but it's the same tray, fits into the same chassis and you can actually mix and match nodes within it if you wanted to. Okay, and so this supports the uh, the Intel GPUs now. Can you tease anything about what else could be coming for this? Something could be coming. <laughs> okay, something could be coming. All right, SD665 V3. Staying employed is a big thing for me. <laughs> Come on now. All right, so now we've got the SD665 V3, fourth gen AMD Epic. Uh, looks pretty similar to the first one, yep. just with exactly. AMD inside. This is AMD uh, latest gen, uh, gen Genoa. Right. Uh, again, a two socket node and a two socket node everything liquid-cooled, 
Uh, again, fits into the same chassis, so you could, uh, if you wanted to, you could mix and match nodes, but um, it supports the same infrastructure. Well, I mean, we know though from the, the way AMD is pushing cores to the market, there's right. some workloads that respond better to more cores, uh, some respond better to the Intel rig and, and right. clock speed, and there's all sorts of, of math that goes in there, but like you said, do you have customers in, in those chassis that are doing some mix and match, or do they tend to be pretty heterogeneous? They'll stay on the same platform, so if they're on Intel, they'll stay on, they'll right. have an Intel, you know. Um, we do have some that are mixing and matching in terms of like within, uh, within a rack uh, or within their data center, they may have some AMD and some Intel. Um, uh, we have seen traction in AMD, uh, particularly in, in, in EMEA in Europe, uh, but the AMD nodes are relatively new into, into Neptune. They just came in last year, right? Uh, and um, uh, we've uh, been very happy with them. So, well, this is uh, an amazing opportunity for you guys to diversify the Neptune portfolio, but it must drive your engineers absolutely nutty to be able to keep up with the pace. I mean, Intel was at the keynote today talking about yeah. fifth, fifth gen Xeon coming in December, and your guys, I'm sure, already are on, they, they're on the lead path in getting these things qualified, but it's, yeah. these days, the pace of innovation on the CPUs is crazy. Gone, gone are the days of just designing for the Intel CPU and an right. NVIDIA GPU, right? right. It's, it, it just it doesn't exist anymore. There's a lot of choices out there, even within the, the, uh, the individual processors' uh, families, right? Absolutely. You have high bandwidth oh, yeah. memory yeah. offerings, yeah. plus, yeah. you know, so that, yeah, it's, it's, um, uh, the, the engineers do a lot of hard work at, at, at Lenovo. All right, show me this last one, because this one's got max copper in this thing. This is yeah. the SD665 <laughs> NV3. Neptune with H100s, four of them. Walk us through this, because I know it's the same thing as the other ones, but visually, yeah. quite stunning. Yeah, so again, you've got the two Genoa CPUs powering four H100s, as you said, connected via NVLink. Again, the same... Uh, same setup for uh, cooling the uh, PCI and the storage, right. uh, voltage regulation. Um, what we like to point out to folks is uh, an entire rack of these, so 36 of those, right. or 36 of the Intel unit, right. Right? that'll get you on the, the top 500 list of supercomputers. And if you just think about air cooled. In one rack. Okay, do the math on air cooled. Right. I mean, you would, it would be a tremendous amount of space right. to get there. So right. what do we do though? I mean, we talked about taking the fans out of these Neptune units, making them lower power draw, but you can't get past each one of these things being 700 watts or whatever it is, plus your CPUs. I mean, it's a tremendous amount of power still. Right. From a design standpoint, are you seeing data centers trying to get more power to a rack or what kind of, what are the, the things you're seeing there to support these types of systems? In most enterprise data centers, they want to maintain a footprint. They want to maintain the same you know, number of systems or less if right. they can, right? This offers density. With CPUs now becoming more prevalent in data centers, with CPUs taking up a lot more power, um, alternative cooling is going to be something that people are going to have to look at, right? They're going to be forced into it. Now, whether someone goes full-blown direct water-cooled like this, or they do some sort of a liquid assist right. like we have in our SR675. With a ra radiator design. Right, yeah. with a liquid air heat exchanger uh, where you wouldn't know that it's a liquid cooled system unless you opened it up. Uh, but customers are looking to do things like that because they're trying to get, uh, they don't want to compromise on power, they don't want to compromise on space, um, and, and they want to be on the you know, latest, greatest technology. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, this stuff's absolutely amazing. Uh, we've done a lot of work around Lenovo's liquid cooling. They're absolutely the leader when it comes to full liquid solutions. As you can see over my shoulder, these systems can't be beat. Uh, I'll link to uh, their Neptune page, which will have more information about that, and the work we did around the SR670 V2, which is a good study in what uh, liquid assist air can do. So yeah. that's, uh, that's pretty cool, too. Thanks for checking out the video. Thank you.